Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Grace Kwan. I'm uh, president and CEO of Hydrogen Emotion, but I'm also uh, here representing the Canadian Hydrogen Fuel Cell Association. Um, the deck is not up yet. Just to bear with us for a moment. Okay, so uh, today we're going to have a joint uh, um, presentation, myself and my CTO, Mr. Mark Cannon. He'll be talking about hydrogen motion. I'll be talking about Canada in general, the Canadian Hydrogen Fuel Cell Association. And so we'll make it uh, nice and tight. So uh, today I'm talking about hydrogen developments in Canada. What's the opportunities for the Netherlands? Uh, CHFCA is actually a very big uh, membership, 190 members, uh, four, uh, three regional offices, Hydrogen BC, Hydrogen Ontario, and Hydrogen Atlantic. This is the list of the membership. Um, if you, you can go on the website and take a look at it. So the Canadian Hydrogen Landscape. Um, in Canada, we are agnostic about um, green or blue hydrogen. It's really about carbon intensity. Uh, so the life cycle GHG emissions is what matter. And uh, of course, that's embedded with cost, availability, and ability to scale. We have uh, distinctive regional competencies. We're a leading energy exporter, uh, top 10 hydrogen producer, three merchant plants, uh, liquid hydrogen plants with two more planned. 40 years expertise in fuel cell technologies with Ballard, uh, 100 plus years of electrolyzer expertise, and of course, um, uh, there's a lots of innovation coming out of Canada. Uh, our vision is uh, to have uh, these hydrogen hubs as they are doing in the US. So um, we start with three uh, major hubs so that we can get scale and proximity. Uh, reduced hydrogen costs, sustainable economics, and uh, economic growth and GHG reductions. In the end, we'll be looking at uh, a final um, hub of uh, 30 plus hubs in Canada. The policy landscape is really, uh, we've really shaped it to support uh, hydrogen and clean energy. So we have a strengthened climate plan, uh, net zero emissions by 2050, uh, hydrogen strategy for Canada in 2020. It's going to be renewed this year. Uh, there's actually a ban on sale of uh, internal combustion engines by 2035 in uh, light duty and uh, vehicle cars. Um, uh, there's a clean electric electricity standard and uh, Canada's um, zero emission reduction plan for 2030. So what does that mean for hydrogen? Uh, we have the uh, two tax credits to uh, uh, somewhat replicate what's happening in the U.S., the IRA. So we have a, T, a clean tax credit for clean technologies, which is 30%. And then we have a 40% tax credit for, uh, for hydrogen generation. There's also a uh, clean growth fund. So it's an organization, um, a sort of a quasi-governmental organization, $15 billion to incent em emission reduction, achieve climate targets, and accelerate deployment of low, um, low carbon uh, hydrogen and CCUS. And uh, it, there's four distinct offerings, concessional debt or equity, uh, contracts for difference, anchor equity, and offtake contracts. So um, the opportunity for collaboration is, uh, of course, in the uh, CETA. Um, I think everyone knows all about that. Uh, I think opportunity one is really about um, equipment suppliers. So Canada's specialty is in uh, equipment supply. We have leading companies in fuel cell, electrolyzer, hydrogen storage. Uh, we're uh, participant in in international initiatives in cost reductions and standard developments. I myself am the chair of the um, Codes and Standard Working Group for Transport and uh, Storage. Opportunities for international companies include um, uh, major cost reductions, integration of the, um, the systems, scaling of manufacturing in Canada and abroad, and then scaling of 
clean hydrogen production projects on both the east and west coasts. The opportunity too is uh, hydrogen vehicle deployments, of course. Uh, there's freight, um, Mark will be talking about a freight project that we're working on later. Um, there's bus, truck, aviation, marine, material handling, light duty. Natural glass blending, we have a lot of natural glass in Canada, uh, and building heat. Clean commodities, so this is something, the hard to bait uh, sectors, biochemicals, uh, reduced iron, uh, petrochemical, liquid hydrogen, ammonia. And then there's a lot of high potential projects that uh, is going on in Canada right now. Um, there, I'm not gonna go through them all, but you're welcome to uh, send me an email or, or look on the website, and we'll, we'll have that information. Thank you, and now I'll hand off the mic to my colleague, Mr. Mark Cannon. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Grace. Again, my name is Mark Cannon. I'm the CTO of Hydrogen Motion, which we like to refer to ourselves as H2M because it's shorter and easier. Um, hydrogen Motion has en engineered a material that absorbs hydrogen under low pressure, which effectively acts like a sponge. Uh, it works at ambient temperatures from minus 40 degrees Celsius up to plus 60 Celsius. And it acts like and works in a system like a regular compressed hydrogen tank. So it is plug compatible. Uh, hydrogen Motion's uh, breakthrough technology is the key to hydrogen supply chain and will, will play a major role in the growing global market for hydrogen uh, technology and hydrogen-based storage. Basically, what it is is uh, H2M's tank is a smaller, safer, cheaper tank. And by introducing this, all uh, electrolyzers, anyone who needs a storage will benefit from it. Uh, hydrogen Motion got into this technology, this challenge, or got interested in this almost 10 years ago now, uh, because uh, the significant costs to the hydrogen economy is actually uh, transport and dispensing. Uh, between production, transport, and dispensing, uh, you know, and unless you have a nice uh, pipeline uh, transporting 300 tons of hydrogen per day, you actually have a very expensive uh, cost. Uh, and it's uh, transport and dispensing is about two thirds of the total cost for the end user. Uh, H2M's innovative material is made of a carbaceous material, uh, carbaceous base, doped and decorated with common elements. It's non-toxic and does not use any rare earth materials. The material has a weak attraction to hydrogen and requires a pressure of 50 bar to get maximum storage. The hydrogen molecule is bonded to the material using van der Waals forces. It is released when the pressure drops as you dispense it. No additional heat or equipment is required. Uh, it has a gravimetric capacity of about five and a half weight percent and a volumetric density of 50 grams per liter. The volumetric density advantage results in a significant, significantly smaller tank. Uh, here are three one kilogram tanks, are uh, the H2M aluminum tank at 50 bars, a composite tank at 700 bar, and a composite tank at 350 bar. As you can see, the H2M tank is about half the size. Uh, H2M tanks provide you flexibility and allow you to enter new markets and increase revenues. Lower costs compete better with fossil fuels and battery electric applications. Due to the low pressure, uh, this tank can be conformed to fit the application. And finally, you could actually use a swappable tank in some markets to reduce your capex. HGM uh, tanks also decrease costs, not surprisingly, because it's a, a lower cost tank. Uh, and the lower pressure eliminates expensive multi-stage compressors and chillers lowering operating costs due to the reduction in energy to compress and chill the hydrogen. H2M has uh, 
a demonstration planned in, in India using a tank swapping model to power uh, a three-wheel auto rickshaws. The driver comes up, takes the full empty tank out, puts a full tank in and drives away. Uh, India is a great market for swapping as they already do that with uh, propane, liquid natural gas. We also have a, a switcher locomotive conversion underway, uh, converting it from a diesel electric to a hy hydrogen hybrid. Uh, and a lot of the features of our tank uh, are very attractive to the rail industry. The lower pressure, 50 bar versus 700, uh, goes with their desire for safety. Uh, the smaller tank means more fuel on the, uh, uh, the train instead of having to use uh, an additional car. And the lower operating costs reduces their co operating cost. Uh, H2M is now currently building its pilot plant, uh, a 10 kilogram per week synthesis uh, system, and uh, is planning for Q1 of 2024, uh, the first getting regulatory approval for the first uh, H2M hydrogen storage system using uh, hydrogen emulsions uh, material. H2M tanks will be smaller, safer, and cheaper. Uh, if you have any um, questions, you can, you can have questions now, or you can reach out to me at mark.cannon at Hydrogen in Motion. It looks like we have an extra three minutes of glorious time. So uh, if someone in the audience wants to ask a question, now is your chance if you have a burning desire to know anything. No, no questions. Questions? Oh. Oh, hang on. Almost made it off without a question. Thank, thank you for both presentations. My name is Ayman, working for Westinghouse. Um, my question is, you mentioned at uh, the first presentation that uh, Canada is agnostic in terms of uh, colors and type of production, and it's only carbon footprint. That does matter. Um, do you consider nuclear to be used for producing hydrogen? Yes, in fact, um, I'm part of the uh, Canada Nuclear um, Working Group. So we're looking at uh, doing a, a hydrogen production using nuclear in Ontario. Yeah. Okay, I think, I think it's good that Canada uh, show the way and you know, help to demonstrate this because in Europe we're still struggling to make a decision. So I'm happy to hear that. And they're also looking at uh, small reactors. So, yeah. um, you know, it's not the giant can-do reactor. They're quite small portable reactors, oh, portable for nuclear. And so, uh, yeah, there's, there's lots of opportunity uh, for that. Thank, Thank you. you for your question. Thanks. That was completely off, off, uh, off topic, but anyone else have a question? Oh, okay. Yes. Um, and how, uh, how about uh, ammonia as an alternative versus... Uh... First, you have to introduce yourself. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Joel van der Beek, Rijkswaterstaat. Okay. Dutch government. Okay. And so how about ammonia? Yes. Uh, actually, they are looking at ammonia in, um, uh, I think, Germany and um, uh, Newfoundland signed an agreement to uh, ship um, hydrogen, and it'll be a form of green ammonia is the, uh, is the concept. Um, the, the, the plant hasn't been built yet, it's still in the talks phase, but that seems to be the, the way to move hydrogen at the moment is ammonia, uh, because it's so difficult to transport. Yeah. I think uh, we have 33 seconds. Anyone have another quickie? If not, then uh, we're off to the next one. Thank you for your time. <laughs>